Good morning, Pastor Luke. Good morning, Pastor Troy. You you have to move over two inches here. Okay. Good. I'll I'll uh, no, I need to move it that way. Okay. Uh, you you've been here a long time. Uh, yeah, about thirty seconds. Yeah, you got here thirty seconds ago. It is good to have you here. We've got we got a new new thing up here. You, you can't see it. We um we have I have the scripture up, and then I have uh, you and I in a little window. Ah, okay. So um, now I'm trying to actually get back to okay. So if you'll if you'll have your phone out, so you can tell if there are questions that come in. I think we we would have set this up, but we're starting at our customary nine forty seven nine forty eight time. So this is actually right we're on, on time. Um, the microphone's closer to you. I hope that's working well. Um, I can do my. I'm getting my fancy mic my head my headphones out here just to test. To make sure. So, go ahead and tell us. You had a story to tell us about last night. Anything you? Uh, we had an elders meeting last night. Yeah. Via Zoom. Yeah. Uh, which I think went all right. Worked pretty well. Um, I lost audio halfway through, so. So um, you didn't actually know what people were saying. Uh, no, I couldn't hear. Um, so I sent you some text messages. Yeah. But other middle. than that, I think it went went all right. Yeah, it's kind of like the Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just had everybody in their little window. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, I can hear myself. I hope I can hear, we can hear you. Do I sound okay? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, okay so um, we're going to pick up today, as we said, at Mark 14, 53. I'll stop messing with the microphone now. Uh, and truth be told, I've read about three verses this morning. I'm uh, getting out the door, did some other stuff. So uh, we'll start with a prayer. And good thing I got a bunch of notes and I got you. Yes. So that'll be good. And then for people who are participating online, Pastor Luke's got his phone open so he can see if you're commenting or asking questions. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, is, uh, is pray. Always good to pray. And I'm going to share a prayer that uh, Dr. Dale Meyer... Uh, yeah, you've got, you've got backup do, double audio going here. You mute our camera. Okay. we got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we call upon you in our perplexity and our need. We pray and trust that you give wisdom to all in this crisis. We pray for those in the medical community, asking that you would pour out your abundant mercy upon their care for the sick, those who have been already stricken by <clears throat> by this disease, and for those who live in fear <clears throat> and anxiety of infection. We pray for scientific researchers and beg you to give them insights that would lead to swift discoveries and research that would mitigate this crisis. crisis. We lift up our governmental leaders, pray for reason and persuasive presentations so that the general public would act with calm discipline and, and shrewdly for the welfare of all. We pray for those whose employment is, has either been curtailed or even eliminated. Pray for their aid through efficient governmental and faith agencies of help. We pray for the congregations and the people uh, that are gathered around the world. Specifically, we lift up our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would give hope and reassurance that our uh, holy faith uh, offers through your word and the ministry of the church. We pray for our ministry here at St. John Lutheran Church and School and Little Wings. Uh, and in concluding this prayer, we join with the psalmist that we would all lift up our eyes to the hills, knowing that our help ultimately comes from you. You are our very present help in trouble. Uh, we pray these things because of the promises that are centered in our living Lord Jesus Christ. In his saving name, amen. Amen. All right, so you've got your Bible out. Um, I'll move over here. Or we have better social distancing. We are now in landscape mode. Uh, let me just turn this a little bit there. And we're going to pick up at 1453, which is John Mark is written into the story. Uh, and John Mark is the, the mark that the gospel is, is named after. Um, would you, Pastor Luke... Uh, Pray, pray. You can pray, but uh, read this section. Just start at 1453 and go as far as you feel like. 
we okay. should go. All right. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warm, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Yet even about this, testi this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. Want to stop there for now? Thus far the text. Thus Is far, that what you say? Thus far. Thus far the text. This text, yes. This text. I don't, I don't know. I, I heard that at the seminary before when someone was reading publicly. <laughs> so it seems like the right thing to say. Yeah. It's appropriate. Yeah. It means we're pausing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um... We, we had picked up at 1452, John Mark runs away, and when we talked about last week, um, there's this sense, real sense of abandonment, that, that not only the 12 run away, but then also John Mark, who's, who's kind of a part of maybe the extended group, he runs away, um, and there's this complete failure of Jesus' friends to support him when the moment came. Mm -hmm. And now we move into this next uh, paragraph we see of the... <laughs> up here and on the screen you can't well you can see it over there i've got the greek just kind of hidden under our um video mm -hmm. so if uh when you get your greek quiz yeah. you right you do have your incidentally your nestle island uh mostly just to look pretentious novum uh, testamentum greke yeah. greek uh which is latin title so yeah um so, so we get this next section, which is the Jewish trial, and, and there are two separate scenes. The first scene is the main hall, then the second scene is the courtyard. Mm -hmm. And so the main hall is where Jesus is front and center, and then the courtyard is where Peter is, is front and center. Mm -hmm. He's kind of on, his, I guess, having his own trial Yeah. Uh, in some sense. And how is he going to testify? Uh, not, not well. Not well, yeah, and and so and in fact, he even is dishonest, mm -hmm. and then he just more vehement uh, about his dishonesty. So they lead Jesus to the high priest, uh, and all the chiefs, priests, and the elders and the scribes came together. It's the notes I have is probably a house, maybe it's the house um, of 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 Caiaphas. Caiaphas is not mentioned, I don't think, mm -hmm. by name in Mark's gospel, but uh, they've come together, and there's a there's a larger kind of main hall. And then we get uh, 54, specifically about Peter, Petros, Rocky. Mm -hmm. uh, and Peter followed him at a distance. He goes right into the courtyard of the high priest. So he's, well, I, I guess he's not, he, he's, from what we can tell, maybe the most courageous mm -hmm. of all of them and that he's still kind of <laughs> at a distance. Uh, he has not completely abandoned yeah. like the other disciples. Not yet, but he may make it worse. Uh, and so he's sitting with the guards. He's warming himself at the fire. We're at verse 54. And, and then we get the little more detail. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking uh, testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Now when it says the whole council, the, the Greek word there is, is uh, just, um, how do you say it? It's the, not alliteration. It's the it's the Hebrew word that's that's in the oh, Greek there. Um, Sunhadrion, <clears throat> Sunhadrion, Sanhedrin, right? Yeah, that's the word for the council. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm at verse 54. Yeah. Now, the chief priest and the whole council, I think the Sunhadrion is just the, uh, I can't think of the word, the yeah, term. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I don't. Yeah. You just take the entire, the Hebrew word and just, uh, phonetic, you just phonetically translate it or whatever. Yeah. There's a word for that. Yeah. Rick Reed, you yeah. probably know what that is. <laughs> so, we'll, um. So the, the, this is, my notes here, that, that there's no official prosecutor in Jewish trials. You ever been to a Jewish trial aside from this one? Uh, no. Me either. Mm. Uh, but I trust the authority. It was probably, again, RT, France here. Uh, and there's so no official prosecutor in Jewish trials, but the prosecution was done on the basis of the testimony of witnesses. So you, you just kind of you gather all the witnesses together, and if you get enough of them, then this is a true. I mean, we're we're gonna collectively make our case mm -hmm. against you. And then I think we get the insidious nature here of what's going on, the agenda, which has actually been um, foreshadowed throughout in this. So we the, the Gospel of Mark is this cosmic struggle, mm -hmm. and well, the beginning, uh, Mark one verse one, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mm. So it's a struggle between God, let me move over here, uh, between God, you're fine, okay. I, well, we're both fine. Um, it's a struggle between God and then between Satan on the one hand, but God, it's not a battle of equals mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, so we get this insidious thing though that sets up because many, it said rather than a, a true witness, they bear a false witness against him and then even worse, they don't even bear the same false witness. Yeah. So their case is going to pieces. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then 57 brings more detail in here. And some then stood up and bore false witness against him saying, and then they, they, we get this quotation, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. He did say that, didn't he? Uh, something similar to that. Yeah, I think it's in, in 13. Uh, yeah, it's right at the beginning of 13. Uh, Jesus foretells the destruction of the temple. And uh, 13. Let me see. Let me pull this up here. As Jesus came out of the temple... Oh, I, 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 on the fly, i got to move this over just a hair here. So they, they've come into Jerusalem mm -hmm. here, and comes out of the temple. One of the disciples says, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. What does he say? You be Jesus. Uh, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Yeah. So it is a, a direct quotation mm -hmm. um, but they've got an agenda here and it doesn't uh, but then we see in 59 again consistently even about this their testimony did not agree does Mark talk about because Jesus says elsewhere when talking about the temple he changes the, the, the subject to himself that this temple referring to himself he will um, be raised again in three days. Does, uh, does that mark? That's what I'm trying to pull up my fancy notes here, <laughs> or in one of the other gospels. Well, he d he, yeah, he does talk about it being rebuilt. Um, <clears throat> they ask about the sign. Well, I, um, he definitely does mm -hmm. when he talks about his resurrection. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. But you got any questions on no. there? I see we're no. getting the, my, my computer's got a little glitch going yeah. with black stuff flashing. Let's, uh, here, we can fix that, though. There, okay. We got rid of the text off there. Um, We at verse 60? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. 
So the high priest uh, stood up in the midst, and he asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? And what's he do? Stay silent. Yeah. There's, a, there's Old Testament prophecy here. Isaiah 53, verse 7. Which is uh, like a lamb. It's the, well, it's the suffering servant. Mm -hmm. Let me let me let me turn in my uh, Bible here. Isaiah fifty three verse seven. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Mm -hmm. So, so we're pulling in a bunch of things all together now. So we have, we have John the Baptist, who says, "You do, mm -hmm. yo," as we had Mr. Tim Gallagher <laughs> tell us the train. Hey. Yo, check it out. No, behold, the Lamb of God mm -hmm. who takes away the sin of the world. Uh, and so now, fulfilling that prophecy, not only is he, he's the suffering servant, it also that we have a, a pretty well-known Lenten hymn. Mm -hmm about he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted. Is that the best rendition? Yeah. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted. I think that's how it goes. See him dying on the tree. Yeah. You can sing along at home <laughs> uh, if you want. But we're not going to do it like a Imagine rendition with no. people doing No. This is not a good song anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so he says nothing, and the high priest asks him again, Are you the Christ, the Christos, which means the chosen one, which is the Hebrew equivalent is the Messiah. Messiah. Or if you want to be a Hebrew, I think you say Meshiach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> are you the son of the blessed or the blessed? Mm -hmm. Now, why do you think they, he says blessed? I don't know. Well, I think it's it's um, it reflects the Jewish avoidance of directly using God's name. Oh, okay. There's a commandment. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, I mean the second commandment, and and so which ties into the first. So mm -hmm. they're, um, the, the, it's uh, circumlocution. Uh, yeah, that circumlocution is literally talking around something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that I, that may be the term, okay. uh, but that that's part of that that they're they're not because because notice in the next verse, uh, no, and Jesus yeah. said, "I am," and he said that you'll see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power. We have a we had a comment here. I'm I'm ready this week. I've got my um, text message here from Mr. Paul Johnson, who says John two verse nineteen. And I'm guessing, John 2, verse 19, let's, let's look it up, is going to be John the Baptist, is uh, the wedding at Cana. Okay, no, Jesus cleanses the temple. This was all, the, this no. was back to, uh, this is good. So, thank you, Paul. Yeah, so John 2, 19, talking about Jesus um, and, and, and his... Um, prophecy, mm -hmm. his statement about the temple. So 2.18, he, he cleanses the temple. The Jews say to Jesus, what sign do you show us for doing these things? 2.19, Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and in three days. three days I will raise it up. So the Jews then said it's taken 46 years to build this temple, and that was the second temple, which was nowhere near as cool as the first temple. Isn't this actually Herod's temple? Herod's temple. So it's not even, yeah. The, it would be the third temple. The third temple, Judaism. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know your history better than me. I've, yeah. been, I've been to Israel. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, okay. So, well, so you've been there. Yeah. Any, any add, add some context. Color. Uh, there's like one wall left of that temple. Yeah. Um, there's a giant mosque and another Muslim shrine okay. sitting on top of the Temple Mount now. Okay. Um. Of the are the it's the Wailing Wall, yeah. right? <clears throat> are the stones wall. big? They are pretty large. Yeah. Now we, we, this came up a few weeks ago. Why do 
I mean, I realize it's what's left of the temple and it's the Wailing Wall. I think, don't, don't um, observant Jews put things into the crack? They do, yeah. Prayer requests? I think so, yeah. Why in the crack? Because uh, I think that's the only, that's really the only, because it's not, I don't even think that's actually, that wall is part of the temple, it's part of the temple mount. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> that's the only part that they, as Jews, have access to. Because uh, the Muslims are have the rest of it, and right. you might know this, they don't really get along. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so that's the that's the only part that they have access to. So it is, this wall is pretty much has become a shrine to them, for lack of a better term. So, so they cling to this physical space, and it's only a vestige. Yeah, and so <laughs> they they say their prayers, they do like all sorts of readings and stuff, in front of this this wall. Yeah. So it's um, generally sad. Yeah, it is sad. <clears throat> uh, as, as Christians, I don't think we should rejoice that everything is destroyed on the one hand. Yeah. But then the comfort that comes in knowing that Jesus is the temple. Well, that's why it's so interesting. There's so much, because when you go to the Temple Mount, there's so, you can feel the tension there. Okay. Uh, there's so much, yeah, tension, anger, dislike. Um, and it's all sad because... They're all fighting over this this space that doesn't really need to be fought over. Um, as Christians, we can rejoice that our temple rose from the dead. Our guy yeah. resurrected, so we don't have to cling to this physical space of the Temple Mount. Because um, we actually are now the body of Christ. We are the temple, God's yeah. temple. So. And, and the temple was the place that God assured his people he would dwell. It's the place where <laughs> sacrifices were made. Uh, for the forgiveness of sin, for atonement, mm -hmm. and now Jesus is that once and for all sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, mm -hmm. he's silent though. Yeah. yeah. Any Anything uh, on our Facebook feed nope. that we need to keep up with? Nope. Well, thanks, uh, Paul, for giving us a, a vector on that. So um, we go to this uh, Isaiah 53, verse 7, and and also, so he remained silent, he made no answer, as opposed to the false testimony that's been made against him. Like, he's just he's saying nothing. You got something to... Uh, transliteration, going way back. Transliteration, to the, that's the word, to, yes. Uh, thank you, Rick Reed. Oh, thank you, Rick Reed. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll give him a special prize. Just get, grab something yeah. off of my shelf later. Um, I've got another note here. At the, so, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed or the Blessed? Uh, it says it's possible that part of Judas's job was to brief the high priest and others on Jesus' more private teaching to his disciples. So, they may not have been there, but Judas says, well, look, if you, if you want to try to make a better case, mm -hmm. I'll be the informant. Here's something he said. Mm -hmm. I bet that would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So, at least it helps to kind of fill in the background we don't have. <clears throat> verse 62 and Jesus said I am ego a me mm -hmm. probably a reflection in John's gospel this comes out even more a reflection of the divine name Yahweh, uh, Yahweh yeah uh, and so this is like the Christological climax of the gospel it's all building up here and 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 so you'll see the son of man it's eschatological in that sense because uh, not only is he lifted up on the cross, but ultimately he's going to be raised from the dead. He's going to ascend into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of power, the place, uh, the, the guy that gets things done. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the coming with the clouds of heaven. And then in response in verse 63. High priest tears his clothes. Just do it. You don't need that shirt. Just pop those buttons <laughs> off there. But you've got your yeah, I like wrist shirt. thing on. Yeah. I know. I'm just, so you're, you're not the high priest. Yeah. And neither am I. <clears throat> Jesus is the high priest. Yes. Uh, so the, <clears throat> the uh, incidentally, arc, arc arus, arc like high. Mm -hmm. uh, so he tore his garments. What further witnesses do we need? So Jesus now, in some sense, he reverses the role. And he puts himself, so in 62, he's like, he's going to be seated at the right hand of power uh, and coming in with the clouds of heaven. He ultimately is the judge. Mm -hmm. So he now has put himself as judge over them. And now they're basically 
testifying against themselves. Mm -hmm. And and so um, we know this though that so the the what they are accusing Jesus of is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Do you have a definition of blasphemy? Uh, speaking against God. Yeah, or like claiming to be God, claiming I guess God, could be. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in Leviticus 24, 10 to 16, um, the penalty for blasphemy, you probably know this, this is a pretty common uh, penalty in the Old Testament when you, when you transgress God's law. Mm -hmm. It's often the same penalty. Usually death. It's death, and it is often death by... Stoning. Stoning. I have a big stone over there, but I won't grab it. Uh, so, 24, Le Leviticus 24, uh, verses 10 to 16. Now, an Israelite woman's son, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the people of Israel. And the Israelite woman's son <coughs> and a man of Israel fought in the camp. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name so in the Old Testament, you know, it's blasphemed God, but they refer to him as the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Israelite woman, uh, the, um, and cursed. Then they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shalom, Shalomith, uh, the daughter of Dibri, from the tribe of Dan. Those names are not commonly used. No. Uh, and, and so, and they put him in custody till the will of the Lord should be clear to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, bring out the camp, um, out of the camp, the one who was cursed, and let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And speak to the people of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall stone him. The sojourner as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. So even whether you are a Jew or just one passing through, mm -hmm. No tolerance. No tolerance. Uh, and so the traditional way of, of Jewish penalty for death is stoning. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Johnson says uh, Stephen, Stephanos, mm -hmm. crown, uh, St. Stephen, Acts chapter 7, I believe. 7? 8? 9? Somewhere, yeah. Okay. 7. Um I feel like it's seven, but I, I could be wrong. He quotes uh, verse 62 yeah. uh, when he's martyred. Yeah, right before he dies, he says, he sees Jesus, the Son of Man. Yeah, yeah. The clouds opening up, he sees him. Right. Which just makes him even more angry. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so so maybe they're also reacting to the fact that just intrinsically, they know they're being judged. Mm -hmm. And so Stephen, even in his witness, of which he's not, being, he's not overtly threatening them. He's doing nothing to physically harm them. They react in a way that we can't take it. Yeah. Similar to how they react to Jesus here. Yeah. So, so ultimately, it is a binary. Mm -hmm. Either you believe and follow, or you don't, and you go the other way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Rick uh, has a, uh, a question slash comment about the <clears throat> when Jesus says, I am. Uh, doesn't that mean more than just I? Uh, yes, in, in the Greek, it's ego, eimi, which you said. Uh, you don't actually have to, ego is I, eimi is I am. In Greek, you don't have to say ego, eimi. You could just say eimi, and that would, that's saying the same thing. So I, yeah. when you when <clears throat> saying the ego, eimi, there's an emphasis to the I uh, when you say it in that way. Yeah, it intensifies it. it yeah. Like I, I myself. Yeah. I am in fact. Yeah. Yeah. I am truly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ready to carry uh, carry on here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, oh, the other thing. So if there were no Romans, then if the Sanhedrin was going to be responsible for killing Jesus, they would have stoned him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, the, the crucifixion, I think, is a specifically a Roman penalty mm -hmm. for death, at least according to Ben-Hur. <laughs> and Spartacus, yeah, I think also. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so now the high priest turns to the crowd. You've heard his blasphemy. What's your decision? And they all condemn him. Mm -hmm. 
Which is essentially what we're reading all the way back in the Old Testament. Like, you're all going to condemn it. Because mm -hmm. you are all my people, and you're all going to be consistent in your confession. Mm -hmm. Except in this way, it's insidious, and the leaders yeah. are, are taking them out. So some begin to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. Mm -hmm. And the guards received him with blows. Uh, what's it, so do you have to speak Aramaic, Hebrew, or Greek to understand spitting on someone? It's pretty uh, detestable. Yeah, pretty just disgusting. Especially now, in the age of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, th that would be... But it, it, this is just something reviling about a visceral reaction of someone yeah. spitting on you. Oh, and it's, it's uh, I think, a pretty universal act of contempt Yeah, to spit on someone. Yeah. I, I just as I... It's certainly an insult. There's no way you ever... ever it's can ever perceive as a compliment. Hey, you spit on me. Thanks a lot. You must yeah. really care for me. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's, it's There's no confusion there. Right. <clears throat> uh, we got a question here. Uh, so did they still, den or did, uh, this is from Amy Holsclaw. So did they still say, deny him after they saw him in the clouds? Did they still deny him? Mm. Well, I, I think, so probably what she's talking about is, is St. Stephen mm -hmm. being martyred. I, I don't think the other people would have seen him. Yeah, I don't think so. For two reasons. The one reason is their focus is on Stephen and they hate him. Yeah. And they hate him because of who he mm -hmm. witnesses to. Yeah. Martyros means to testify. Yeah. Um, and also, because I, I think you have to have faith to see. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah. I think uh, believing leads to seeing. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question because it's... The, the, they're, they're so focused with their hate and who they can take it out on. Mm -hmm. They hate God. They may not even realize that. In fact, they would tell you they don't hate God. Mm -hmm. They're going to destroy Stephen. And so rather than being opened up and lifting up their eyes in humility, in one, you drop your mm -hmm. stones, uh, they're not going to see him. Well, it's, this is these, these guys that killed... Uh... Uh, Stephen, a lot of them probably the same guys that condemned Jesus. Yeah. Uh, they saw Jesus. They saw him do miracles. Our ser uh, sermon this last week. They yeah. saw a man. Well, yeah, yeah. With his sight restored. They saw Jesus Jesus do all these miracles. They witnessed them, but those miracles did not produce faith. No. Um, the the miracles actually, uh, more so, I think, work faith. For those who already believe, encourage faith, strengthen faith, uh, because they didn't have the eyes to see, they didn't have the faith to see what Jesus, who Jesus was, what he was doing, and so a man's sight is restored. That's awesome. But instead of being happy and excited, right, they get angry and yeah. they want to get at Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so again, if you don't have faith, you're either if you if you have faith, you're moving towards Jesus. If you don't have faith, you're moving away. From yeah, you're him. not really ever in neutral. Yeah. Which is a very Pauline, St. Mm -hmm. Paul, scriptural way of talking. But I think that scriptures testify to that mm -hmm. completely. We're, we're not born uh, open to whatever. We say, well, we're born, we're by nature sinful and unclean, and mm -hmm. we're going away from God, and we, by nature, hate God. And really, ultimately, as much as we might say we love ourselves above all things, we ultimately even hate and despise ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know who God is, you don't know who you are as a creature, mm -hmm. so then you can't see anything rightly. Including other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a good... Yeah. Because it, it's always struck me like... Like, I've been pretty angry at people. But I've never been so angry that I want to stone them to death or crucify them. Like, you haven't had enough bad things happen I, to I guess yet, not. So. But uh, uh, it's it's just amazing that just because Jesus is claiming to be God, like, their reaction is straight to killing him. Well, I don't, and this has come up in the class. And I, so, I mean, the Pharisees are zealous for the law of God. I mean, they take it so seriously. I, I can see where they're trying to protect, yeah. and this is the greatest affront. Oh yeah, because to them. they don't want to be exiled again. 
Well, no, I mean, he, ago, he they is, were yeah. exiled, and that was that was a big bummer. It's like, well, we were exiled because we disobeyed God. Right. Well, let's not do that again. Sure. sure. So we are going to make sure we obey the law so well that we are going to make more laws to obey the law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and kind of miss the point of the law. And they're being faithful to Levitical <laughs> law. Yeah. It's just the problem is they were they were already set up. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. Like mm-hmm. they have decided. It's mm-hmm. not God's will that they're. Well, God's will is being done. Mm-hmm. But but they are actually the the agents to do something. Well, that is ultimately for good, and this is where we can't get into the hidden God. But yeah. um, I think as we've talked about so often, and it keeps coming up, we we have a tendency to go into this ditch or this ditch, and the middle, mm-hmm. following Jesus is the way. Yeah. So um, they all say, "Yeah, let's kill him." So so some began to spit on him. Verse sixty five. <laughs> The guards, will they tell him prophesy? Why do you think they're saying prophesy? Uh, I think they're mocking him. If you knew all these other things are going to happen. Yeah, because I think in, is it not in this one? Yeah, I think in one of the other Gospels it says, well, tell us who hit you. Yeah, because I think they yeah. covered his stupid. Face. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to know everything. Yeah. It, I mean, the, <clears throat> so then there, there's... I think this also shows the, the the darkness in a human heart because if he if he is guilty of blasphemy, kill him. This other part here, and I mean this is a very 2020 way of looking at it, but I think we can. This is bullying. This is degrading. And degrading, degrading. Yeah. yeah, it's it's awful. And and so the spitting, the the insult there that that pushes him even further down. The hitting. Yeah. The mocking. Yeah. So, so we get, uh, they, they receive him. Um, and, and so this then is, is leaving the, um, I think this is where we talked about there are two scenes here. The first one being at the, the, the house of the high priest. And now we're going to move outside uh, in verse 66 into the courtyard. Before we go, Larry has a question. Are there too many laws? We're talking about, uh, I think, the Pharisees. The Pharisees? Adding more laws to yeah, the laws. Yeah, yeah. 613. Yeah, there's 613 in the Old Testament. Right. And then they create more of what's called the hedge around the law. Sure. <clears throat> it's like, we can't we can't obey these laws, so let's make these other rules to make sure that we obey these laws. Right. Um, Which went, may be the case, I think mean, we talked about it, but did Adam oh. tell Eve, don't even touch the tree? Yeah. He's, he's making more laws. Yeah, maybe, like I want to put a hedge around it for your yeah, own good, like maybe. we do with our kids. Just it's hot. Just you know what? Just stay out of the kitchen. So um, yeah, well that's a good question. I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think this is where we see in the scriptures where where the is it the lawyer, the the rich, the rich young ruler. I guess it falls in the same category. Um, he says, "Which is the greatest?" Because I need to know if I get six hundred and thirteen, mm-hmm. which is preeminent. Mm-hmm. So it absolutely could be true. Well, Jesus boils down to two. Right. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and right. love your neighbor as yourself. And then I think from there, then as you would evaluate other laws, we would say, well, does this help me to better love my God and or my neighbor? Mm-hmm. Because in loving my neighbor, I'm actually loving God. Yeah. And because I love God, I should love my neighbor, which is probably a good category as we evaluate law. <laughs> like why we now, because we talked about this has come up. We're right now at a stay at home order. Mm-hmm. But you and I are exempt. We're essential. We're above the law. No, <laughs> no, uh, no. Yeah, um, no. But so, um, but that's not that's not a, um, it's not martial law in that sense. But we talked about how do we decide what laws that we are we must obey, even if they seem kind of goofy, and other laws that we say we cannot mm-hmm. comply with this. Yeah. Who what are we? I mean, as, as the apostles say in Acts, we must obey God rather than men. Yeah. So obeying God is always our first priority. <clears throat> and the way, though, that we, and, and I think this is important as, I would say, any Christian, certainly as Lutheran Christians, we don't say, well, here's how I know how to obey God, because God told me mm. to tell you mm. this. That'd be convenient. Well, it sure would. <laughs> God, and, and this can come, oh, this is going to, this can come veiled in light, I would say. Because I could say something like this. Look, Pastor Luke, God laid it on my heart this morning when I was driving in in the fog that I need to tell you that uh, you really ought to shave your head. 
or whatever. Yeah. God told me to tell yeah. you that. You know, and and so it would sound really good. Well, I don't know if it sounds good or not, but but we say no. What, what we have is that the God has revealed through His Son and specifically the Scriptures as the norm that norms the norma normans. Yeah. I think. I'll, I'll agree with you. <laughs> okay. As opposed to the norma normata. Yeah. The norm that is normed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to your question, like I don't know if the issue is really if are there too many laws. Uh, fact is, like uh, apart from Christ, we can't obey the law, right. regardless. If there's just one law, I mean, Adam and Eve had one rule. Well, maybe more, but they yeah. they couldn't. They they still disobeyed. Um, I don't know if they had a rule. They just they knew they they were yeah yeah they lived in the rule yeah yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I don't know if it's really again an issue. There's too many. Uh, it's just we can't we can't because God's law. Maybe take a step back. God's law is really just our will for our life. His will. His will. For, his will for our lives. Yes. Um, which is good. It's actually meant for our good. Yeah. His uh, will is that we <clears throat> thrive, not to be miserable. Yeah. Um, but we, in our sin, we 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 rebel against that, and. Now the law is a burden to us. Um, Do I have to? Yeah. Um, as as a as a father, <laughs> mm -hmm. I pick up on this a little bit. As a, as a son, I've mm -hmm. rebelled against. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to do this? Yeah. 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 So, but thanks be to Jesus that you know, He fulfilled the law in our place, and actually through the work of the Holy Spirit, He enables us to live according to God's yeah. uh, will, which is good for us. It's good for our neighbor. And so then we we love the law mm -hmm. because there's nothing better. That's all the Psalms the Psalms taught. Um, you got two comments on there about. Uh, so back to uh, well, so Mark says that Cheryl says that Lenski says. Okay. Uh, they hit Jesus uh, with their fists. Um, so going back to the, the hitting Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Larry again says uh, obeying the national laws is obeying God's law, isn't it? Um, yeah, I would. I think we can generally say yes. Paul in Romans thirteen, 13 uh, yeah. tells us to obey the government because no government exists apart from what God has established. Yeah, and Paul's talking about the Roman Caesar government. Yeah. that is pretty terrible, pretty awful, pretty well, violent. Yeah, and we and so we look at and I and I was reading somebody talk about this. Uh, you know, there's so this silver lining, and, and, I, and it, I mean, this is idiom or whatever, but um, so we look at Rome, and because of the Pax Romana, the gospel can spread prolifically. It's not an accident that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son into this specific circumstance. So even now, in the midst of a COVID-19 quarantine, I think we may have more people at Bible study who are able to participate in this. Mm -hmm. And not just St. John Indy, but... Uh, not, I usually silence my... Let me put my computer on airplane mode. Uh, not just at St. John Indy, but around, maybe around the world, people are actually listening to... I mean, they come to church online, mm -hmm. participating in, meditating on the Word of God, on Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Getting off the treadmill, the hamster wheel of life. Um, I'm not obsessed with Final Four. I mean, Purdue. This was Purdue's year. I think. This, no, I'm not. Even no, no, that. Nebraska I can't even wasn't going to make the no, tournament. No. I mean, Purdue probably. But we at least got to play in the Big Ten tournament, one game. So they get to play in the Big Ten tournament. Oh, you're saying this year? Yeah. Because they were so bad. Well, because the rest of the games were canceled. Yeah, so they at played least Nebraska got to play. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they put anyway. Yeah, and we died. Uh, okay. Back, Larry. Back to uh, your your question. Um, obeying the government is a fourth commandment issue. Um, the government's in the place of the father. Yeah. In that sense. Uh, Luther yeah. Uh, extrapolates from the fourth commandment: oh, honoring your father and your mother includes any authority that God has placed above us, which would include the government. And so, yes, generally speaking, obeying the government would be obeying God uh, because that's a, an authority God has placed. For our good, generally. But, looking to Acts, where the government authorities are telling the apostles to stop talking about Jesus, the apostles are like, we can't do that. we got to obey God rather than you. Right. So there are places to civilly disobey the government. Yes. 
not defiantly. Um, but we're not there right now. No, and I was just thinking, um, is it, it's, it, it's in the, um, is it the fourth petition? I don't have to close, close my eyes now. Where it talks about good government. Oh, yeah. Is it fourth? Fourth petition of give us this day our daily bread, because I think good government is under daily bread. Mm -hmm. um, temporal things, mm -hmm. stuff. And then the first petition, I believe, also, where it lists off. Mm -hmm. The memory work with the listing of, like, house, home, yeah. clothing, shoes, land, animals. Yeah. All the, all, all good the government yeah. is in there. Yeah. It's a blessing, because if we just had anarchy, and I think some people, <clears throat> that's why there was a run on ammunition, and you have... You have more ammunition than I have. I'm confident of that. I have a little, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you say, hey, i got to get more ammunition because, look, things could get bad, and i got to be able to protect my hearth and home. Mm -hmm. Hearth and home. I think it's just going to sound fancy. I don't know where it came. <laughs> but um, good government really says, so rather than all of us having to go around carrying a, a gun or a club, mm -hmm. we, we will civilly live together, and that's a blessing because yeah. then you can focus on not just how do I – get mine and keep it but now i can care about other people at a deeper level than rather than seeing them as a threat to my stuff i now mm -hmm. can help and support them yeah and actually and this is why most sundays during the prayers of the church we actually pray for our government i, I pretty much every sunday yeah uh, whoever whom, whom, whomever whoever whoever is the president whoever is in we we as christians ought to pray for all of our gov governmental leaders whether we like them or not what other party they belong to. Exactly, we, yes. We That is part of our Christian vocation to pray for our uh, governmental leaders and to respect them. There was some concern on social media, not here specifically, uh, because we have, and some of you may know this, we have, um, our Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod puts out pr uh, an outline for prayers every week, which is a blessing because it gives us a, a format. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in that outline it will have praying for the president by name, the governor, and it, fill in the blank, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and there, and there was someone not here, even in Indiana that had taken offense. Well, why are we praying for Donald now as our president? Like, are we endorsing Republicans as opposed to Democrats or independents? No, no. that's not the issue. <laughs> we're just, he, he is a real person in the same way we were praying for Eric Holcomb, our governor. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, as much as any time we need a good governor, we'll pray. We, it doesn't get down to the level of mayor suggested in there, but I think Joe is his name. Hogsett. Sure, I'm, I'm new here. citizen of this, <laughs> of this American town. Anyway, so we have a couple things on there. People uh, are agreeing. Yeah, amen, yeah, amen, yeah. So, um, so speaking of government. Tell us more. Keep going. Oh, uh, well, the rulers, the religious leaders, want to kill Jesus now. Yeah. And now they got to go to the their civil authorities, the Romans, to get permission to do that. And they acknowledge that. Now, it's politically expedient also. Because it's during the Passover. Yeah. But none of this is an accident, how it all yeah. works out. Um, and and so it is politically expedient that they don't want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't. So yeah. So we're going to transition scenes now from the 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 the, pal or the the high priest's house to the courtyard. And now this is where Peter is basically front mm -hmm. and center. Go ahead and read for us. All right. Verse uh, 66. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, saw him, and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Thus far the text. Thus far. Yeah, the text. Yes. We're just, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it, but... Uh... I went back into the studio and I had to text up while you were reading. Oh. We're back now. Uh, so he's below in the courtyard. I'm guessing. Can you tell me anything about the geography of why or the topography? Uh, well, Jerusalem is in kind of a hilly place. It's on. Okay. A, it's on a ridge. Um, 
being the high priest, he probably had a pretty big house. Okay. Um, with a courtyard and courtyards were kind of just open. Anybody could kind of go, go, right. go in and out. So right. it wouldn't be unusual for someone like Peter to be in uh, this courtyard, especially if there's something going on. There's quite a, a scuttle. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a whole, whole bunch of people are there. And so right. people walking by like, hey, wander in, see what's going on. That yeah. wouldn't have been uncommon. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so one of the servant girls, um, which then I have a note here. So she... <laughs> So here we have the high priest, and now we have a, a nameless servant girl. I mean, in terms of, like, she she is socially insignificant yeah. in this sense. I mean, not to say that she doesn't have value as a human being, but but in terms of what she can do to Peter. Uh, pretty minuscule. Minuscule, <laughs> right? But it's not rational. Yeah. So, I mean, Peter has nothing to fear from her for all intents and purposes. She's not physically probably a menace to him nor is she in a position of power or privilege mm -hmm. to do something to him. But still, he denies. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, the, the scene is not rational. Mm -hmm. um, but that's interesting to, to contrast it with Jesus, who's standing before someone with quite a bit of right, authority. Right. Jesus and he basically says nothing. Jesus remains silent. Yeah. Peter. It's quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spews out. Falsehood. <laughs> I, I see. I'm yeah. I'm definitely. I am not the Christ. I am not Jesus. I, I think I would spew something out. Lord willing, it's not falsehood. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tend to have a higher word count in my days. So your 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 silence. Is, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> so so there's kind of the, the there's a progression here for for what happens. So we have this personal thing between this servant girl and Peter. Mm -hmm. And, and she says, look, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. And he denies it. And he says, I don't understand what you... I neither know nor understand what you mean. <laughs> and they go out into the gateway. And what happens? Uh, rooster crows. Dude, you're, come on, old McDonald. Yeah. How does, what does it sound like? cockle doo doo, -doo. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of gusto there. <laughs> so we go from a personal thing, a one-on-one, -on -one, to now, now we get a group. And so the servant girl, and she says to other people, hey, this guy, this guy. Yeah. is one of them. Mm -hmm. And again, he denies it. And now the, the group is coming around. They're on to something. Mm -hmm. you're, you're definitely one of them. You are a Galilean. Now, Galileans are from the north. The north. Jerusalem is in the south, the south in Judea. Mm -hmm. Do they, it's kind of like... Indiana and Kentucky in this case. I don't know if Nebraska has a... Iowa. Iowa. I mean, that's but east, that's east-west. East -west. This works better to be Indiana and Kentucky. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> or even IU-Purdue. Yeah. IU-Purdue. Mm -hmm. um, Judeans have a low view of Galileans. Yes. Is, is what they're I kind of yeah. those those hicks that live up in the, the hills yeah, yeah, in the north. Yeah, yeah they're, not, they're not erudite. They're not urbanites. Um, and so... They're, they're going to be inclined. Yeah. He probably had a different accent. That's probably why they could tell he's a Galilean. I wish, I just wish he would have tried a different accent. Yeah, Come on, yeah, Peter. Get a, yeah. Come on, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done better. So not only do we go from personal <clears throat> to a group, to now we get a whole group of people in 71. He begins now. I mean, he's really losing it. Yeah. He's, he's cussing. He's, he's... <laughs> he invokes a curse on himself. Yeah. And he swears. So now he's breaking other commandments. Yeah. And he, he's, I don't know what you're talking about. And now, and this is where Tom Lee, who is the keeper of the word uthus, or oithus, you know this word? I don't. I don't know this word. Immediately. Ah. This is a gospel of action. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately, what happens? Go ahead, old McDonald. Uh, cockle, doodle, doo. <laughs> do. You're a terrible rooster. <laughs> the rooster crows a second time. Yeah. So he denies three times that we only have two rooster crows. If we're doing Bible trivia, mm -hmm. we're putting the Holy Gospel of St. Mark. And then Peter, is this law or gospel? He remembers Jesus' words. It's, this this is harsh law. <laughs> Searing law. He Because I mean, Jesus keeps saying, remember. And people say, remember how he told you. Now he remembers. Mm -hmm. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. I, my experience has been, and this will be your first year doing it doing this 
as a pastor, well, this will be on our. Incidentally, tomorrow we're gonna ha- we're gonna try out a live, a Facebook live, pastor, uh, pastor chat pep rev, talk. Rev it up. Rev it up. Uh, thanks to Noah Schrader and his he he has won the. Uh, Noah, Noah's watching now. Wa- off the presses. This Lutheran life. Um, w- uh, then he had new ones. Yeah. Patmos Pod. And Patmos, what's Patmos? It's the island that uh, Saint John is exiled to. Yeah. Virtual Patmos. And then you say, Noah, your favorite, and you have won the award for most name suggestions. <laughs> Patmos Live. Probably because and you said my favorite given the context we're in, <laughs> which is in exile. Yeah. Uh, Sons of Thunder. Mm. Yeah. Bowen Ergies. Uh, Ignatius and Polycarp. Who's Ignatius and who's Polycarp? Those are two church fathers that said some said, said some things. Polycarp is much fruit, a lot of fruit. He's a direct tie-in to St. John. Oh, yeah. Whoever's older is who I am. I don't. I would guess Polycarp's yeah. older. You can be Ignatius. Yeah. The Eagle's Nest, and then the Greek one, Phos and Te Scotia, which I brought up yesterday on the elders' meeting. You remember it now, don't you? Uh, light in the darkness. Yeah, light in the darkness. Uh, the... Concordia Seminary St. Louis seal. It says Anothen Ta Fo. Light to the, in the world, to the world? Is it the light from above, I thought? Oh, yeah. yeah Anothen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I took Greek a lot longer ago than you did. Uh, well, it's just systematic. It's just, that's why we're a team here. So, uh, anyway, well, I got distracted. We're going to do that tomorrow live. Um, I just I know we're almost out of time. This is a great place to end. Oh, what I was going to tell you, and why I thought about all that. Because we don't know, we know that Monday Thursday is still going to be on Monday Thursday, whatever date that is on the calendar, um, April something, one two ninth ninth. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, April 9th. Good Friday will still be then April tenth. We just don't know exactly what the worship thing is going. We're probably still doing virtual stuff. We're going to talk more about communion, mm-hmm. etc. Possibilities. We don't know the answers yet to that. Uh, but I was going to tell you, so I find when I'm reading this, though, I, I get kind of emotional. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm with Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to give Peter a bad rap, but he's actually here. Yeah, he's uh, the closest one. Yeah. Like, I don't know. He, he obviously, I don't think he knows what he's doing, but he wants to do something. He wants right. to help Jesus. He wants right. to bust him out. I don't know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he does everything wrong. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, he gets he gets scared. I mean, people are accosting him, right? Uh, so he gets very irrational and loses his mind, and then then it ends. I like the way Mark says it, and he broke down and wept, and he's just absolutely crushed. He's crushed. Yeah, he's got nothing. He's slayed. Yeah, in the spirit. Yeah. So on that positive note, <laughs> uh, but, but we'll we'll get to the rest of the the Mark next week. Mark 15, verse 1, uh, the Roman trial is where we'll pick up. Any closing thoughts? I'll have you close with prayer this morning. We're back. We're back on Facebook Live at 4.30. Mm-hmm. I'm dressed. I've got my shirt. I forgot to bring my lunch, thanks to Andrea. My wife <laughs> is going to bring my lunch back in later. Um, I 4.30. Got shirt, yeah. You got your shirt in yeah, there? No. Uh, you already covered it up anyway. Yeah. Any, any other closing thoughts? Anything on there that we need to know about before we? Uh, Amy likes Patmos Live, so. Okay. Uh, Patmos Live. I think it's got a lot of depth to it, so mm-hmm. I, I think uh, Patmos Live. It's been changing every day, so. Yeah, we just keep trying new names on. It. I don't yeah. know if we ever land on yeah. one. All right. So. All right. Uh, well, let us pray. <clears throat> uh, dear Lord God, uh, we thank you for uh, this opportunity to uh, come together virtually uh, to uh, to study your word, to hear your word from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we, th- we thank you that um, Jesus uh, at his trial was silent. He was the lamb led to the slaughter for our sake uh, and that uh, he was condemned for our sake. We ask that you be with all of us in this uh, coronavirus situation. Give us uh, patience um, and calm hearts to do what we can uh, to uh, serve one another, uh, to obey the government, but also to, uh, to look out for one another. And to look to you to uh, see your son, Jesus, in all of this. Uh, help us to trust you that uh, you, are, you are in control and that you are going to, that you are taking care of us and you are with us in this. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you next time. We'll see you.
Lord bless you and keep you.